Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to dive into using the cryptography one-way encryption methods, SHA-256, 384, and 512. These functions were never intended to be used as functions for our hashing passwords. Let's learn about why these functions exist and how to implement them. Are you ready? All of the source code for this video is available at my GitHub address. So what is the intended use? The SHA family of cryptographic hash functions are used to generate a fixed size hash value ranging from 256 to 512 bits from a simple message or smart document like Microsoft Word or PDF files and just one more example that really causes a lot of fear, a compressed file you downloaded from a website. Wouldn't you like to know this file has not been tampered with? Let's look at an example of a simple message to be sent to a colleague. Using a small application I just wrote, let's walk through the two steps. First, create a message or document you want to send someone important. You can see here I typed in three paragraphs. Now that your document is complete, let's use either SHA-512 or the SHA-384 or SHA-256 to generate a hash value that can be used as a digital signature, or I like to call it a checksum for this document. As you can see here, I opened up my Gmail account. Let's send this email to someone important at northpaul.com. Notice I have blocked out the body for this message. If someone important adds any new lines or character returns, it will invalidate my checksum value. So I want to make sure they know where to start and where to end. Several seconds later, someone important opens up the email and then highlights the contents of my document and paste it into the application. Let's copy the checksum value into the box labeled receive, R-E-C-V. So the content of our email has been pasted. Our receive checksum value has been pasted in receive. And now we just need to do the test. We're gonna click on SHA-512 and notice that generated a key. Then we're gonna click on the compare button and if they are the same, this should be green. Perfect. Had I just did one change in this document, like maybe turn it into a question mark and then hit SHA-512 and then compare, notice it would be different. So now you know how to send a document and have confidence that it hasn't been tampered with. Here you can see we're using Visual Studio's version 2022. Let's create a new project, file, new, project, then select WPF application. Make sure it says C Sharp Windows Desktop, hit next. For the project name, let's use Digital Signature Maker, press next. We'll be using .NET 7.0, create. We'll be first modifying main window.xaml. Come here and click on the up down arrows to toggle our different windows. Let's change the title to one way encryption message digest, the height 728, the width 1280. Then notice I have the grid row definitions. So we have a 40, that was for that top menu bar. In every place where you see four, we're using them as gutters. So we have 550, that big text box. And then at the bottom, remember those two rows for the send and receive? Those are those placeholders. The rows begin with index zero. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So on our first one, we're grid row zero, that is where we had our buttons. You can see inside of grid row zero, we have two stack panels, both orientations horizontal, but one is a line left, the other one is a line right. On the left side, we have our buttons for 512-bit, 384-bit, and 256-bit. We have nice content, so you know which one they are. And we have the the method that will execute when that button is clicked for each of these buttons. That finishes the first stack panel. In the second uh, stack panel in row 
0. Remember, we had a button there to give an example text. So notice it's called example doc 1. Notice the on click event. And that finishes up grid row 0. On grid row 2, notice that we're doing horizontal align stretching, vertical alignment top for the height of 590. Then we're putting a scroll viewer in here. And that has a child of that text box. This is where the content of the document goes. Notice the name of that is called source text. It accepts the return character and the tab. And we place a four pixel module all the way around this text box so it fits in there perfectly. And that finishes grid row two. On grid row four, notice we're setting the background color to dark gray. I have another stack panel with the orientation of horizontal. And that's going from left to right. And it starts off with a label. Notice the content is sign. And then we have a text box. And that is where I'm actually going to put the digital signature. And I don't accept carriage returns or the tab character. This is the checksum value that goes here. And then we have the actual text box at the very end that tells me the bits used. And that is row four. On grid row six, we start off with the same thing, a label, a text box to store the received checksum from the customer, then a button that actually compares those signatures, and then a button that actually clears the whole form. And guess what, friends? That is the end of the XAML for this project. You should have 97 rows of code. Remember, the source code is at github.com. Just go grab individual files or the project to continue. We're now looking at main window XAML.cs. This is the code behind. Let's start off using our using statements. Notice we have four of them. And then we're going to come down to uh, our constructor, a uh, main window. No changes there. Then we're going to come down to our buttons. Remember, we had a 512, a 384, and a 256. So we have a class object called one way encryption. Let's make a variable of type one-way encryption. Then we're going to get the text from that big text box and store it into the variable text. And notice here, we're going to have a method in there called SHA-512. I'm going to send that text in there, and then it's going to give me the checksum value. I'm going to put that in the digital signature down below. And because there is 512 bits here, I'm changing the font size to 11. And that's a lot of data. And then the receive, I also know that it's going to be 512 bits, so I'm going to make that 11 as well. And then I'm going to give the user a little tip that there is 512 bits. Then we're going to animate the background colors. We're going to start at light green and go to white in both the text and the digital signature. On our next button, 3v4, we pretty much follow the same steps, except notice my font size is bigger and I'm changing the bits. Here we're dealing with 384 bits. And the last one is we have the button 256. Notice the font size is up to 18 and that one label will be labeled 256 bits. Now here we just have some sample text. So from like the top bar button text one example, here's just some text that I want to put in there. Notice I'm saying source text dot text equals SB as a string builder, and I'm going to put that into that control. It's possible that we have a digital signature we have from the receiver. So what I want to do is compare them. They are either good, so we're going to say light green, or they are different, so they're going to be light pink. Now, if I have not received my sender, what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a little message that says uh, nothing to compare, and I'm going to animate the receive from sender box. So there you have compare signatures click. Now we're on to clear click. At the very bottom, we have a button called clear. And notice that I set the background colors for both the digital signature and the receive from sender, both to white. I make the text values uh, empty strings. I make the big text box in empty strings, and the bit used, I also make empty. And then I animate the text box and the two checksum values. Notice that I'm going from sky blue to white in all of them. And that is clear click. Our last method in this class is animate background color. Notice I get three parameters, a text box, a color from, a color to. Notice that we're going to be using color animation. Then I'm going to say from is that from clause, to is the to parameter, 
and then I'm going to say from seconds one and that is the duration then I'm going to default the background color from whatever I'm saying from is at and then I'm going to begin animation and that finishes up main window XAML.cs this is the main class of this project. Notice we're calling it one-way encryption. We have the 512, the 3D4, the 256, and each of these methods will then call get hash and then verify hash. We'll start at the top at 512. So I'm gonna be sending in a string variable and then using SHA-512, I'm gonna create a variable called S and it's gonna be of type SHA-512.create. Now using that text, and this class object, I'm going to get the hash value. And when that hash value comes out, I'm going to send back that object, all the text, and that hash value to see if I can regenerate that hash value. If I do, I'm going to return that hash value. That hash value, oh, it's also known as like a, a checksum. Now, if there is no text, I'm going to return no value. Now, the next two methods, the 384 and the 256, follow the same principle and the only thing that will be different is we'll use 3d4, 3d4, 3d4 and then the 256 but they're all the same. So here's the 3d4 as I told you it's just all 3d4 out and then on the 256 notice that it's all 256 out and then you can see here on line 54, line 36 and line 18 we're calling hash, get hash. So notice we're sending the hash algorithm that is at S256 all the way up to 512 and the text string. So notice that we call the ASCII get bytes. So you're going to have the input variable, you know, that big long string, and I'm going to take each of them characters and I'm going to turn them into bytes. And then those bytes become the input to compute hash. And then this will create on the 512, it will create 512 bits. And then I'm going to loop over that and I'm going to build a string builder and I'm going to print data sub i as hex, two characters, lowercase. And if this is, I uh, haven't seen that before, you can say string.format, my first placeholder, make it format as hexadecimal, and then this data sub i goes into this zero. Find a way you like and then discontinue. So that right there is get hash. And then after we do a hash value, we're then going to verify that. So notice that we're sending in this object, we're sending in the original text and then the hash value we just computed and that's verify hash. So I get the hash value again for that same one and then I'm just going to compare. I'm going to compare the hash out with the hash that we sent in here and I think that makes sense. So here we just validate our hashing and that is the class one-way encryption. Let's see this program run. I'm going to example one doc. Got the text. Let's execute SHA-512. Notice we have the checksum or the hash value and that is a 512 bits. Now we're going to go for the 348 bits. Notice font's a little larger, less number of characters. And then SHA-256. Notice real small and that's 256 bits. And then of course we could just copy this down there. Regenerate that as if we were a receiver. Do a compare and we're good. And that's the app. And there you have it team, the Shaw family of hash function builders. If you have any questions about this video or comments, please leave them below. I appreciate your time watching this video and hope to see you back in my next video. Take care.